Hello and welcome to Morningstar. I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Sam Morse, Manager of Fidelity European Values, to give his three stock picks. Hello, Sam. Hi, Emma. So what's the first stock you'd like to highlight today? Well, the first stock I'd like to highlight is uh, L'Oreal. Um, it's important to remember um, what I like to invest in. Typically, I'm looking for companies that uh, are attractively valued and are able to deliver consistent dividend growth over time. Uh, and I think L'Oreal's a particularly interesting uh, one. It's obviously well known probably to your viewers as being the global leader in the uh, cosmetics market. Uh, interestingly, it only has about a 12% market share, global market share, which seems quite low for the leader. And I think shows that it has plenty of potential to grow its market share organically um, and also through bolt-on acquisitions over time. Um, it's a very high return uh, business. Uh, it's invested a lot in its brands over time. Uh, it achieves a sort of 20% cash flow return on cash invested and that's been very stable over the years. And its growth really has been driven through the aging of uh, uh, populations in developed markets and through an emerging middle class in emerging markets. Now, I think the, the, the main complaint people will have about L'Oreal is the valuation. Uh, it sells on around 25 times next year's earnings. Uh, but it's important to remember that the beauty market is very resilient. So if, as I expect we will, over the next three to five years, we have some sort of a downturn in the economy, uh, this is a company that will be able to continue to grow its earnings. The beauty market actually grew 1% in 2009 when everything else was seeing a very difficult time. So I think it's it's a very resilient company, uh, pays a 2% dividend yield, growing at uh, close to a double digit rate. Uh, and I think the sort of uh, total shareholder return you'll get from L'Oreal in the next three to five years will be very attractive relative to the market. And what's the second stock today? My second stock is probably a little bit more contrarian. Uh, it's a healthcare company. Healthcare, the healthcare sector has performed poorly over the last couple of years, partly due to the weakness of uh, uh, the dollar relative to the euro, um, partly because of pricing pressures in the US, uh, and also because I think you know when everything else is flying in terms of earnings, you know healthcare looks a little bit lackluster. Um, I think Roche is at a very interesting juncture. It's a company that uh, uh, generates a lot of cash. It's currently selling at about a 7 to 8% free cash flow yield. Uh, it pays a decent dividend, has a very long-term track record in terms of dividend growth. But over the last three years, actually, the dividend growth has been disappointing. They've only grown the dividend at about 1% per annum. And I think that's because the board have been cautious looking forwards because they know that their three big cancer drugs uh, are at threat from biosimilar competition. And the key question is whether they will be able to offset the negative impact of this biosimilar competition through their product pipeline. Now, we think at this at current prices, a lot of this bad uh, news is factored into the share price. Uh, and we're actually quite confident that the business will be able to grow and that that dividend growth will accelerate from here. So you've got a 4% dividend yield. We think accelerating dividend growth in a very strong company. Uh, we think that's uh, an interesting one to look at right now. And what's the third and final stock? So the third and final stock is Kone, uh, which is, I guess in UK terms, a lift company or elevator company. And uh, this is a business that uh, has very high returns, uh, mainly because the maintenance business uh, tends to have very high returns. Um, if you've ever been stuck in an elevator, you'll probably know why. Um, and in a sense, Kone has been a victim of its own success um, because it was very early into China, established a number one position there, uh, did a very good acquisition of a business called Giant Kone. And um, unfortunately, though, the competition uh, sort of noticed that China was growing very well and put a lot of capacity down. This resulted in overcapacity and what had been a very profitable new equipment market um, began to become a little bit less profitable. So Kone saw its margins come down from about 15%, currently around 13%. Now, we think they're through the worst in terms of the Chinese market. Uh, we think that there'll be more pricing discipline going forwards in that market as a result of the increase in raw materials that's putting quite a lot of pressure on some of the smaller players. And we think the market itself is beginning to stabilize. Um, 
income. And as a result, uh, Kone, which pays a very attractive 4% dividend yield, we expect that dividend growth to start to accelerate from here. It has a very strong balance sheet, a lot of cash on the balance sheet. That gives it a lot of optionality in terms of M&A, etc. Uh, so we think that's an interesting stock at this point in time. Sam, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. This is Emma Wall from Morningstar. Thank you for watching.